What is going on guys, Coach Show. In this video, I'm gonna give you guys my free hypertrophy uh, program and blocks. So I've been running several blocks for the last couple months. And first off, big shout out to Mike Isratel and the RP Strength Crew. Uh, they've been my training partners kind of throughout this whole block. Uh, he helped me program this block because I needed to just get some knowledge and learn more about hypertrophy training. So uh, I'm just gonna dive headfirst in and explain all of the exercises, the movements, the reps, the sets and give you guys something to try, especially during summer, you're trying to shred up a little bit, you wanna put on some actual muscle size. This is a fantastic program to start with and run. So uh, basically it's a six day split, okay? So I train six days out of the week. Now you may say, whoa, six days is a lot. However, it's a lot different from strength training because the sessions typically are not as long. So I, I probably was in and out anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour, uh, probably towards the hour mark as the mesocycle continues and the training gets a little bit more intense, but you can pretty much fit all these in within 45 minutes, hour max, which is nice compared to a strength training session, which typically could be anywhere from one to two hours. So six days a week, not so bad. And the way it's laid out is basically a push, pull, and leg day, and then a second push, pull, and leg day with some slight adjustments, which you'll see in the movements and also the uh, rep ranges as we go through that in the next part of the video. But I don't wanna waste any time. You should obviously be subscribed to this channel. If you're not, do it right now, right now. Hit the subscribe button, yes. Or I'm gonna come after you, like Liam Meeson and take him. Just kidding. Uh, and we'll get on with it. So. I have two days out of the week, which I actually have doubles. Uh, you can easily make this one day uh, of just training or, or one session of training, but I broke it into two. Now, uh, like I said, if it doesn't work for you, you don't have to do that. But on day one, I have an AM and a PM session. So day one is going to be a low incline barbell press. So it's a chest press. We wanna make sure that we don't have the bench up super high. So just a little bit of a low incline. Uh, second movement is going to be cable flies, and when I first started this mesocycle, I had the cables a little bit higher on the cable position. Now, if you don't have cables, you can obviously switch that to dumbbells if you'd like to, but we prefer cables for that first block, and then dips full range of motion. So, something I noticed, and you'll kind of hear me say this at the end, is I just wasn't getting full range of motion with a lot of the exercises. You know, I'm used to doing strength training, trying to use a lot of body English, put up as much weight as possible, uh, but when it comes to hypertrophy training, we really want to... Uh, dial it back, get full range of motion, make sure that we're uh, controlling the eccentric portion of the movement and not using body English because it's very hard to gauge our uh, you know, improvement or the proper uh, regulation with our stress if we are kind of all over the place. On some days we use a lot of body English, some days we don't use body English. So that's why just across the board, no body English when you're doing uh, hypertrophy training and these mesocycles because it's just a lot easier to gauge your uh, performance and your intensity and results. So that's day one. On um, the PM, we got barbell curls, okay? We have lateral raises with a pause. So dumbbell lateral raises and make sure you pause for a second count. Should be a deliberate pause that you can notice that in your training. And then barbell upright rows, okay? So that's the AM and the PM. Day two, we're gonna do our pull day. So we have rows to chest. So when we do that, we're gonna make sure that we touch our chest with the barbell. The barbell returns all the way down to the ground every time. And then once we get to the proper uh, rep range and reps in reserve for that, we're gonna switch it to rows to belly superset. And with the rows to belly, they don't touch uh, the ground. So it's just like a typical bent over barbell row. Um, from there, we have lat pull downs, regular grip. Then we're gonna go to uh, barbell shrugs and we have wrist curls. Now for some of these movements, totally recommend using straps just because it's gonna help uh, give you that overload that you want without your grip being an issue. So on my pull days, I'm using straps, um, you know, and just trying to get the proper technique down and not have my grip become an issue. And that is day two. Day three is gonna be our first leg day. And since, you know, legs are pretty taxing on the body, we only have three movements typically for our leg day. And uh, the first one's gonna be hack squat. So I got a nice new addition uh, hack squat in the last couple of months here, so we've been using that a lot. Uh, then it goes to barbell squat with a pause. So that's gonna be a high bar squat for quad development. And we're pausing in the bottom for a second uh, just for that little count. And then we have hamstring curls to hit the hamstring. So day one uh, for legs is gonna be primarily focusing on the quads and uh, very quad dominant. Whereas you'll see later it's gonna switch to more of a hamstring focus. So that's the first portion of the week. All right, day four is gonna be another AM and PM session. 
So we're gonna start off with push day two with a close grip bench, okay, regular barbell bench. Uh, then we're gonna go to skull crushers. You can use the barbell uh, for that and that's what we recommend. And then we're gonna go incline dumbbell curls to get some arms in there. And then we're gonna do a shoulder superset. So for the shoulder superset, you're going to uh, basically do as many front raises as possible to then as many lateral raises as possible and then bent over rear delt uh, raises. And you go until just about failure, so a couple of reps left in the tank, then you rest a little bit and then you hit it again, okay? And I'll explain that for how many sets we do uh, in the next portion of the video, but you wanna be just cranking out lots of volume for that. Uh, and then PM, now a lot of people ask me, where do I put my strongman training in with this program? So on my PM session, I put a slot in for any strongman training. And typically I'm looking to work light and also on technique, uh, but just keeping the movement fresh in my, you know, my mind, my body. And that allows me to still practice, you know, the skill that I will be competing in down the road without getting too rusty, but it's not the main focus because the main focus is going to be the hypertrophy training. So that's day four. Now day five is going to be our pull day two. And on this, we kind of flip the order of movements that we had last time. So we're going to start with pull downs on this day. We're going to keep a regular grip. Uh, and then we're going to go to bent over rows. Now this is going to be regular barbell bent over rows. Then we're still going to do our shrugs and we're still gonna do our wrist curls, okay? So we're getting the traps uh, as well as the forearms in there. So day two, which is uh, for legs, is gonna be a stiff leg deadlift. So now we're focusing more on the hamstrings as the primary movement of that day, uh, putting most emphasis in the hamstrings. And then we're gonna go back to hack squats. And then we have a lunge plus either body weight or dumbbell depending on uh, how you know, advanced you are. Uh, but you're going to do a set of lunges, and then it's going to go right into a super set of bodyweight squats. And if you can add a little bit of weight, add some weight. But first week, I would say do it as this because it's pretty brutal and your body's still getting used to this new stimulus that you're putting on it. So that's pretty much the layout of the week. I'm going to go over the reps and the sets next, uh, which will just be easy. And you guys can plug this into an Excel sheet, a Word document, write it down on a piece of paper, whatever you want. But it's eight total sessions per week if you count uh, the PMs. Uh, that I have in here. Like I said, you don't have to do the PMs. Obviously, I'm a strongman competitor, so if you're not doing strongman, you don't have to do that. You can easily throw that as a conditioning session or just take it out entirely. Um, or you can combine it all as one day. That's totally up to you. I like having a little bit of rest, being able to get some food in before my sessions and then come in and get after it. But one thing I mentioned in the beginning that we always want to focus on is full range of motion with all the exercises, getting as much depth and, and as deep as possible. Uh, obviously, if you have some restrictions, just go to the deepest level of that range of motion that you possibly can, and hopefully over time, it'll increase. Uh, control the eccentric. We don't want to be wild, and we want to make sure that we are focusing on the eccentric just to get as much gains as possible. And uh, like I said, no body English. The more body English we put, the harder it is to gauge how much uh, you know, we're actually using the muscle versus how much we're using momentum. So if you don't do that, it's very easy to tell if you're getting stronger or not and how many reps you're actually hitting with that prescribed weight. So write it all down, okay? Take a screenshot, pause the video if you need to, and now we're gonna head over to the reps and sets. All right, guys, before we get on to the sets and intensity that we wanna prescribe, we're just gonna talk about rep ranges for each of these exercises. And there is a range just because everybody's a little bit different. I found that I respond differently in certain rep ranges for certain muscle groups. So just some general guidelines. Uh, and typically what I like to do is stick to the upper end of the prescribed rep range. And then as the weeks go on and the intensity goes on, you know, obviously those reps will probably drop because we're adding more intensity. Uh, and then we probably want to fall towards the bottom end of the spectrum. Uh, but I'm just going to run through it with you guys and you guys can write this down. So... On day one, for the low incline barbell press, we went eight to 10 reps. Cable flies, 10 to 15 reps. Dips, full range of motion, 15 to 20 reps. PM, we got barbell curls, eight to 10. Lateral raises with a pause, 10 to 15. Upright rows, 10 to 15 as well. Day two, row to chest uh, with that superset, eight to 10 reps. And then obviously just put whatever you get for your uh, row to your belly uh, superset. Pull downs, 10 to 15 reps. Shrugs, 15 to 20 reps. Wrist curls, 15 to 20 reps. Day three, we have hack squats, 10 to 15. Pause squats, eight to 10. Leg curls, 10 to 15. Day four, close grip bench, 10 to 15 reps. Skull crushers, 10 to 15. Incline dumbbell curls, 10 to 15. 
and then uh, sh uh, the shoulder superset that I had mentioned, 15 to 20 reps. Day five, pull downs, 15 to 20, rows, 15 to 20, shrugs, 20 to 25, wrist curls, 20 to 25. Day six, RDLs, eight to 10, hack squats, 15 to 20, uh, lunge in the squats, 15 to 20. So a little bit higher volume on the second half of the week uh, with some of those variations just to help uh, push that a little bit. Uh, and then all of these workouts, I actually made videos on later on in my YouTube channel. So I should have been linking all these throughout the video. So if you have any questions, uh, just look up if it's a pull day, a press day, or a squat day, and it shows me doing the movements prescribed in this program if you have any questions about that. Uh, so let's head on over to the sets and the intensity prescribed. Okay, guys, so I want to keep this really simple when it comes to sets and the intensity, aka the uh, reps in reserve, and that's how we're going to use uh, our auto regulation principle in this. So, for the sets uh, for day one, two, and three, week one, we're going to start off with two sets. So, this week should be you just start to get a pump in your training, uh, but then you're going to dial it back because we're going to keep that progressive overload as the weeks go on in the mesocycle. So, week one, two sets, week three, three sets, week three, another set of three sets, and week four, four sets. And this is going to be the exact same throughout day one, two, and three. Okay, when it comes to the reps in reserve, we're going to do week one, three reps in reserve. So if the rep range calls for uh, 10 reps, you're gonna work up to 10 reps and you should be able to have three more in the tank approximately. Then week two, we're gonna push the intensity so we only have two reps in reserve. Then week three, we only have one rep in reserve. And week four, we have zero reps in reserve. So we're going all out on that fourth week because we're trying to earn our deload week uh, for the next block. So that's gonna be the same all the way through uh, day one, two, and three. Same principles are gonna apply for day four, five, and six. So just keeping this as simple as possible, you have uh, your sets, week one, uh, two sets, week two, three sets, week three, three sets again, week four, four sets, all the way down for day five and six, and then the same RIR as we did for day one, two, and three. Okay, so that is how we're going to uh, get our sets in and then gauge how many or how intense our session should be with RIR or reps in reserve. All right, guys, so this was an example of what I had done. It worked very well for me personally, and I think it's gonna work for a lot of you guys, and I think hypertrophy training is a necessary step when it comes to maximizing strength gains down the road when you get back into strength training, and I feel uh, very confident in what I'll be able to put up in the future when I get back into strength training because I took the time to do this hypertrophy programming. But Add it in, see how it works for you. You know, take some of these principles and obviously adjust to whatever you have to. If you know uh, rows aren't your thing, switch it out. Okay, if you like to do a different bench variation or squat variation, swap those things out, plug and play it to you guys if you would like. Uh, but once again, Dr. Mike Isertel helped me out with this programming. You know, RP Strength has tons of hypertrophy programming there. Like that's their thing. Uh, at the same time, I have programs on my website, zastrength.net as well. And the hypertrophy program is the number one selling program at this time. And it's just uh, a really good program to throw into your training. So if you don't want to do all the work and you want a longer program, check out uh, my website or RP Strength website or any other hypertrophy program. Uh, there are plenty of options out there and I know a lot of them are pretty similar, uh, but you want to make sure that you have the basics down and you want to run this uh, just to get the increased muscle uh, tissue size. And then that's going to translate over to when you get back into strength training. But Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends or whatever. This is me being a little bit more nerdy, doing the whiteboard talk type stuff. But until then, stay lean, mean, strength machine, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.